I'm Lucy Marbles from Fresher Bites. Today I'm going to show you how to make some really gorgeous mashed potato. Very easy. Watch my step-by-step -step film. The recipe in your booklet is for 400 grams of potatoes for two people. I'm doing enough for four people, so I've got 800 grams of potatoes here. It doesn't matter too much what kind of potato. It often says on the bag which ones are better for mashing or roasting or whatever. I've got a nice potato peeler. You can use a knife, but you lose a lot more of your potato. With a peeler, hold the peeler in the hand you write with, the potato in the other hand, and just put your thumb here and pull the peeler towards it. I find that easiest. If you're struggling, the chances are you're pushing too hard, the peeler can't move. If you're too soft, you're stroking it, it doesn't peel very effectively. It's just a matter of practice. You need to get just under the skin and pull it like that. When I've peeled each potato, I'm going to pop it into this pan, which has some water in it. That will just stop them browning. Later I'll take them out and cut them up, but first just pop them in there to stop them browning. And you'll also notice I'm saving my peelings. I'm going to wrap them up in this newspaper. If you know somebody's got a compost heap, they'll be glad of them. Otherwise, just wrap them up, pop them in the bin. They'll biodegrade nicely. Here are my 800 grams of potato. Now the trick with mashed potato to make it smooth is to make sure the potatoes cook evenly. And in order to do that, we need each piece to be roughly the same size. So what I like to do is cut the potatoes into say one centimeter cubes. They'll cook a lot quicker. The smaller they are, the quicker they'll cook. And keep myself a cube as a guidance. These pieces, pop them back into the pan that's already got the water in while we cut the rest. Start each one with a bridge hold. Bridge hold and slices. Roll it into the cubes. And keep referring to this cube to check we're not getting too big or too small. If you have lumps that are big, they will cook slowly, which will mean at the end you will have um, a lump that's still hard. Anything that's too small will turn to mush as it's cooking and you'll lose it into the water in the bottom of the pan. And there we are, all done. So that's just enough water to cover the potatoes. I'm going to put a pinch of salt in. Now I want to bring those potatoes to the boil. The amount of time they take will depend on how old the potatoes are, what variety they are and how small the pieces are cut. Pieces that size I would hope would be done in about 14 minutes from boiling. So once I get to boiling, I'll set a timer for 14 minutes and I'll come back and check them. Okay, that's coming nicely to the boil now, so I'm just going to cover it up, turn it down. It just needs to boil. We don't want it to boil over. Just check the bubbles are still bubbling nicely. There we go. So I'm setting my timer for 15 minutes so that we're sure they're cooked all the way through. There goes our timer. These have had their 15 minutes. Let's have a look. To test whether they're ready, what we need to do is poke them with a knife. Find a big one. That looks ready to me. If the knife will easily go through, they are ready. Make sure you choose a big piece, because as I said earlier, if it's not properly cooked, you're going to end up with lumps. That looks perfect. Now we need to drain these potatoes, and this is where you will be glad of a colander. You can, of course, do it over the sink, like this, tipping the water out, but there is a chance of losing potatoes down the sink. There's also more chance of you burning yourself. So I recommend you get a colander, which you can even sit in the bottom of the sink and pour it out. Put your drained potato pieces back into your pan, back on the hot stove, and just let them dry off a little bit. I've got my 30 grams of butter here, I'm going to pop that in. I'm going to put a slug of milk in. This really is personal taste now. I'm putting quite a lot of black pepper in because I like it. We salted the potatoes so we don't really need any more salt. You can put in grated nutmeg, but it is quite a strong flavour, so it depends what you're going to be serving with. Now I've got a masher. If you don't have a masher, you'll have to use a fork and it's a lot harder work. But a masher's great. You just mash it all, basically. And the longer you mash it, the smoother it will be. As I said, it will depend also on the type of potato 
that you have and it will say on the bag when you buy them whether they're good for mashing or not. You can see with a good masher it really doesn't take that long. Make sure you get right around the edges. What will cause you lumps is bits that haven't been mashed and bits that weren't quite cooked. When you transfer your saucepan make sure you put it on something so it doesn't burn the work surface. I wish you had smell vision that smells really delicious. Pop over to Facebook, tell me what you'd like to see me cooking. Show me what you've been cooking, ask me some questions. It'd be lovely to see you. See you soon.